What is the most terrifying way to die? Drowning. Burning. Being buried alive. For me, one fear trumps all the rest. Not as rational as most, but it still keeps a place in the darkest corner of my mind. Astrophobia. The fear of space. The fear of being trapped in the pitch black void. No radio, no contact. The idea of being trapped alone with nothing but yourself, space, and the thought of your oxygen levels depleting as you try to stop your hyperventilating. You imagine your lonely death without any chance of ever being found. Continuing this downward spiral until, finally, your mind meets the darkness of the void and you go unconscious. That being said, let's shoot for the stars and hope we return because not all have. In 1967, the Soviet Union was excited to launch the Soyuz 1 into Earth's orbit, a testament to the communist superiority on the 50th anniversary of the communist revolution and a response to America's Apollo missions. The plan was a lunar orbit rendezvous. The Soyuz 1 would be launched into Earth's orbit, manned by Komarov. The next day, Soyuz 2 would be launched, manned by two other cosmonauts. The two vehicles would then meet, dock, and Komarov would transfer to the Soyuz 2. After which, all three cosmonauts would come back home. So, on April 23rd, Komarov was sent into space, and he successfully entered Earth's orbit. The next day, however, the launch of Soyuz 2 was cancelled. Prior to the launch, there were mechanical checks of both vessels. The Soyuz 2 had a total of 115 documented issues. However, anyone who mentioned this was immediately demoted, fired, or sent to Siberia by the Russian government. Come launch day, had no surprise to the ones now in Siberia, the Soyuz 2 couldn't launch. This left Komarov alone to man the Soyuz 1 back to Earth. However, in those mechanical checks, there were another 79 issues, and they were identified in the capsule Komarov was in. As Komarov prepared to get his vessel back to Earth, the navigation system failed. Komarov was hurling around the Earth at thousands of miles per hour without any assistance in getting back. Somehow, though, Komarov was able to stabilize the ship. As he started to pull back into the Earth's atmosphere, his parachute failed, and the vessel became unresponsive. The clip you heard was of Komarov yelling and cursing those that had put him in the vessel. On that call was also his wife. She asked him what she should tell the kids, and his last words were as follows. The heat inside the cabin is rising. He died immediately on impact, his corpse incinerated. This wasn't the end of the Soyuz mission, though. In 1969, the United States beat the USSR to the moon. In hopes to not fall behind, even with the main goal of the space race accomplished, the USSR aimed to launch the first space station in 1971. The space station was the Solyut-1. The station would be entered by cosmonauts Vlad Volkov, Gregory Dobrovolsky, and Viktor Potsayev, using the Soyuz 11. On June 6th, the cosmonauts would launch, with the goal of spending three weeks orbiting the Earth. On June 7th, they successfully docked the space station. On the 11th, a fire. The three cosmonauts did their best, and were able to successfully keep the fire from spreading. On June 29th, the cosmonauts were ready to head back home. Moments after the spaceship undocked from the Soyuz 1, contact was lost. Mission Control kept track of the shuttle using radar and tracking the craft, which successfully pulled out its parachute and touched down in northern Kazakhstan. On the recovery mission, the team tapped on the hatch of the shuttle, waiting for the three to come out. 
They didn't. Prying the doors open, they found the three cosmonauts, blood streaming from their ears and noses. They had depressurized from a leak within the ship. The moment this happened, their eardrums would have burst, their reflexes would slow, and they would have had twenty seconds to find the source of the leak. None of them survived. In early 2012, Don Petit, a NASA astronaut, described his experiences with hallucinations while working on the internal space station, also known as the ISS. He described them as flashes in his eyes, like luminous, dancing fairies. He explains that he would often see these frequently while working and while engulfed in the dark of his sleep station. This piqued scientific interest immediately. These astronauts go through rigorous physical and mental testing to make sure they are performing at peak capacity up in the atmosphere. Having an astronaut say they were experiencing a visual phenomenon could mean insanity or extraterrestrial life, both of which scientists would like to stay on top of. This experience, dubbed the light flash phenomenon, was studied intently. They determined what Dawn had described as dancing fairies were what's called cosmic rays. Although you may think of beautiful light phenomena like the Aurora Borealis, hallucinations don't go well in space. In 1976, the Soyuz 21 docked the Salyut 5 space station. After 49 days in orbit, the cosmonauts initiated an emergency evacuation. They reported an acrid smell aboard the Salyut 5 and feared it may be a leak of some sort. The replacement crew was sent up to check for signs of such. However, None of them found any odor, technical issues, or other signs warranting concern. This created great speculation for the emergency evacuation, with physiological problems and interpersonal issues being placed on the cosmonauts. NASA, however, came to the conclusion that the acrid odor was no more than a hallucination, nothing more than the void staring back at them. Humans aren't made for space. Without our brains, we wouldn't even have survived Earth. Space is not a place for prosperity. This starts with radiation, an idea that may elicit discomfort when we remember the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, or, more prominently, consider the fact there's enough metal tubes powered by atomic radiation on this planet that, if one of them is used, we may all disappear. If you fear the radiation of an atomic warhead, it may not comfort you to think about the radiation that comes off of your star. If going without sunscreen for too long on a beach can bring you skin cancer, consistently being in space quite a few miles closer without the protection of the stratosphere isn't much better. On average, astronauts on the ISS are bombarded with around 300 millisieverts of radiation, in contrast to the average 6.2 millisieverts that we may encounter on Earth's surface. This fact, in tandem with the knowledge of microgravity, or a space of low gravity, will slowly eat away to your bones and muscles. Even with constant exercise, scientists have said that astronauts who have stayed on the ISS for more than six months experienced a decade's worth of long-term bone loss in their shin bones. The human body has existed for thousands of years in earthly conditions. Going out where there is nothing will destroy both mind and body. Looking up at the night sky, many see beauty, feel curiosity, become mesmerized. But every time you look up at that night sky, marveling at the allure of the universe, remember that it is all floating in a dark void, one that has existed long before humanity and will one day exist forever without us. If we stare too long at that dark abyss, we'll be regretting it if it stares back. <laughs>